Why does trauma not only hurt your mind, but literally change your brain? You might think what happened to you is in the past, that it was months, years, maybe even back in your childhood. But then, why do you still feel it? Why, even though your surroundings are now safe, does your body keep reacting like you're still in danger? Why do you remain on edge, afraid, with that sense of emptiness or disconnection? The answer lies in your brain. Trauma isn't just a painful memory. It's an injury to the neural connections that keep you balanced, help you feel safe, trust others, and rest. As neuroscience says, trauma leaves invisible scars, but your brain can learn to heal. In this video, you'll discover how trauma rewires your mind and body, why it's not your fault that you still feel it, and most importantly, what you can do to teach your brain to recover. Welcome, NeuroCurious Minds. Let's start by understanding. Why does your brain stay at war, even when you're no longer fighting? When we think of trauma, we often imagine an accident, a disaster, abuse, something big. But trauma doesn't always come from one extreme event. It can also result from prolonged situations, neglect, humiliation, constant fear, a childhood full of insecurity. Trauma happens when something overwhelms your nervous system's ability to process and regulate. In other words, when something makes you feel so threatened or helpless that your brain stays stuck in survival mode, your amygdala, the part of your brain that detects danger, becomes overactive and records that experience intensely, like an alarm that never shuts off. Meanwhile, your prefrontal cortex, the part that evaluates plans and calms you, loses power against the fear. And your hippocampus, the region that puts memories into context, is affected, making the trauma feel like it's still happening today. That's why, even when you're no longer in the harmful situation, your brain still reacts as if the danger is present, with anxiety, distrust, insomnia, hypervigilance. Your mind and body remain trapped in a kind of loop, trying to protect you from a past that no longer exists. But here's what no one told you. The same brain that learned to survive the trauma can also learn to heal. During a traumatic event, your brain enters a state of maximum alert to protect you. And while that defense mechanism is helpful in the moment, it can get stuck and keep affecting you long after. The first thing that happens is that the amygdala, the brain's danger detector, becomes overactive. This creates a constant sense of fear, anxiety, and vigilance, as though something bad could happen at any moment. Even small triggers, a sound, a smell, a word, can set off that internal alarm. Then there's the hippocampus, which organizes and contextualizes memories. During trauma, the hippocampus reduces its activity, so memories are stored in a disorganized, fragmented way. That's why many people feel their traumatic memories return as flashes, confusing dreams, or unexplained physical sensations. Finally, the prefrontal cortex, the rational part that helps you make decisions and calm emotions, loses influence in the chaos. This explains why, during and after trauma, it's hard to think clearly, make plans, or even tell the difference between real and imagined threats. Together, these changes create a cycle where your brain becomes highly skilled at detecting danger, but unable to turn off the alarm and find calm again. Trauma isn't just a painful memory. It's an experience that changes how your brain, nervous system, and body perceive the world. Even years after the event, it can still shape how you feel, how you act, and how you love. Emotionally, trauma leaves both visible and invisible marks. Many people live with a constant sense of anxiety, as if danger is still lurking, or with a deep sadness that seems to have no clear cause. It's common to feel afraid to relax, to trust, or to let yourself be vulnerable. You might also experience emotional detachment, as if you're watching life from the outside, unable to fully connect with yourself or others. That feeling of numbness or emotional emptiness is actually a defense your brain learned to protect you from pain. Physically, 
your body can remain trapped in a prolonged state of alarm. Constant exposure to cortisol and adrenaline weakens your immune system, disrupts your sleep, damages your digestion, and drains your energy reserves. You might feel unexplained muscle pain, chronic fatigue, palpitations, knots in your stomach, jaw tension, or recurring migraines. Sometimes these symptoms linger for years, even decades, without being recognized as consequences of trauma. And in relationships, the impact runs deep too. Trauma can make you expect the worst from others, distrusting even those who try to care for you. You might isolate yourself to avoid getting hurt or engage only superficially, keeping everyone at arm's length. Others react the opposite way, desperately seeking approval or affection, tolerating unfair treatment just to avoid being alone. These reactions don't mean you're broken or defective. They mean your nervous system learned to prioritize survival over peace. They are defense strategies that once helped you, but no longer serve you, and they can be reprogrammed. Recognizing that your intense emotions, exhausted body, and struggles in relationships have a neurobiological root and are not your fault is crucial for beginning to heal. Trauma changes how you feel, how you inhabit your body, and how you trust others but it does not define you. Your brain can learn new ways to feel and live, even if it feels impossible today. And even though people say, it's over, move on, or give it time, just be strong, neuroscience has shown that trauma doesn't work like that. When you experience trauma, the neural networks that store that memory encode it differently from a normal memory. Instead of being organized as a story, with a beginning, middle, and end, traumatic memory fragments stay scattered sensory and emotional. Images, sounds, smells, physical sensations that burst in without warning, as if you're still there. That's why traumatic memories don't integrate or process well in the hippocampus and instead stay anchored in the amygdala, which remains hyper alert to danger. This explains why just trying to forget or distract yourself isn't enough. The traces remain active in your nervous system, ready to trigger even years later. In fact, trauma isn't just stored as a thought, it also lives in your body, in tight muscles, shallow breathing, racing heartbeat. That's why it feels like the danger is still present, even though your mind knows it's over believing that time alone will heal it, or that you just need to toughen up, only adds guilt when the symptoms don't go away. Healing from trauma isn't about forgetting or being strong. It's about allowing those memories to integrate, letting your nervous system regulate, and teaching your neural networks to perceive the present as safe. Trauma doesn't go away by denying it but it can transform when you give your mind and body the tools to process it. Because even though trauma changes your brain, your brain also has the ability to heal. Thanks to neuroplasticity, neural networks can reorganize and create new connections that gradually deactivate traumatic imprints and strengthen circuits of calm, trust, and resilience. It's not about erasing what happened. It's about teaching your nervous system that the present is safe and it no longer needs to live in survival mode. There are several science-backed strategies that help reprogram your mind and body. Conscious breathing and mindfulness, which help regulate the amygdala and reconnect you to the present, reducing hypervigilance. Specialized therapies like somatic or cognitive behavioral therapy, which help process fragmented memories and integrate them. Physical movement, such as yoga, walking, or exercise which releases accumulated tension and stimulates the release of healing hormones. It's also crucial to create safe and restorative emotional experiences. Surround yourself with trusted people, set boundaries, and find spaces where you feel seen and accepted without judgment. Every time you experience a moment of calm, safety, or genuine connection, your brain strengthens the neural networks that help you break free from the cycle of fear and build a new sense of normality. Reprogramming your brain doesn't happen overnight, but it is possible. With small, consistent, positive experiences, your mind learns that the danger has passed and begins to live from peace.
not fear. But if the brain can reprogram and heal, why do so many people feel like they can't move forward? This happens because, without realizing it, they fall into patterns that reinforce the trauma instead of easing it. The first is pretending nothing happened, repressing emotions, and carrying on as if everything is fine. This doesn't erase the trauma. On the contrary, it stores it in the body and manifests as anxiety, tension, or psychosomatic illnesses. The second mistake is isolating, avoiding contact with others, and not asking for help. Trauma makes you feel like no one understands you or that you're a burden if you speak up, but connection with others is one of the most powerful tools for healing. Another mistake is forcing yourself to forget, believing that distracting yourself or avoiding the memories will solve it. But what isn't consciously processed continues to appear as nightmares, impulses, or physical symptoms. And finally, believing healing is linear and quick. Recovery is not a straight line. It has ups and downs, good days and hard days. Expecting everything to resolve quickly only creates unnecessary frustration and guilt. Recognizing and avoiding these mistakes allows you to approach the process with more compassion, realism, and effectiveness. And here's a powerful truth. Trauma doesn't just destroy, it can also transform you. Even if the experience was devastating, your brain has the ability not just to recover, but to grow from it. This is called post-traumatic growth. On a cerebral and emotional level, many people who go through healing develop new skills, like greater tolerance for frustration, better emotional regulation, and an incredible ability to adapt to change. They also tend to develop greater empathy and compassion. After experiencing pain, they become more sensitive to the suffering of others and more aware of others' needs. Some even find a renewed sense of purpose, deciding to help others, changing direction in life, or dedicating time to what truly matters, things they may not have valued before. That's why it's so important to recognize your progress, no matter how small it seems. Every step counts. Every calmer breath, every time you choose to care for yourself, every boundary you set. Celebrating those little victories strengthens new connections in your brain and helps you move forward with more confidence. If this video helped you understand what your mind already suspected, share it with someone who needs it. Leave your experience in the comments and subscribe to keep learning how to care for your mental health together. Because knowledge doesn't just inform, it also heals, transforms, and sometimes even saves. See you in the next video, Neurocurious Minds.